Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at something called the t-test. The t-test is a statistical test used in biology to help us determine if there is a difference between two sets of groups. This is good for looking at uh, trees on one side of a forest and trees on the other side of the forest. So I can compare the leaves from one tree and the leaves from another tree. Uh, measure their masses and find out is there a real difference. I mean you can calculate a mean and possibly standard deviation but somebody's figured out how to do a statistical test and this is actually one that's used quite a lot especially in biology you know for determining if medicines different types of medicines are effective for different types of uh, diseases drug treatments for example. Now we're just going to use a simple example and I'm going to be jumping between a few screens here. So Johnny, Eugene, Test score averages, these are their raw scores. Johnny clearly has a greater spread or greater standard deviation. Eugene has a smaller spread or smaller standard deviation. So what if we want to calculate exactly how different their two sets of grades are? If I were to plot these on some kind of graph, how much would they overlap with each other and how much would they be different? If it was one, uh, one tree compared to another tree or the left hands of all of 100 people versus the right hands of 100 people to find out if there's a significant difference between the left hand and the right hand size. Doesn't matter what samples you're using, but you're using this to compare two sets of data and you're using this specifically to determine if there's a difference between the mean of the two sets, but we need all the raw data to help us out with this. So the t-test actually takes the means and the standard deviations into consideration and gives us a magic number that we can use to determine if the results are significantly different or not. Okay, so I'm going to jump over here to another document really quickly. And I'm going to explain these by jumping back and forth. So here's a sample set of data. Um, just say these are uh, lengths of leaves from two similar trees, but we have reason to believe that one tree is getting more nutrients or something like that. So anyways, here are all the raw numbers for, there are 15 numbers here for sample one from tree one. For sample two, there's 15 numbers. You can see here, I've already calculated the standard deviation and the means for both. Um, what I'm going to do, normally how you would do this is you would use a calculator or use Excel or there's online uh, websites that will help you to actually calculate the T value. But let me explain each step as we go along. So uh, in a moment I'm going to pull up my calculator and show you how to press the buttons to make this all work. But for now I'm just going to pretend like the calculator has churned out all my numbers. So I put all these numbers into the calculator, press the button that says two sample T tests, blah blah blah, and I end up with this number here. That is my magic number, you could say. The t-value is 2.066. So what in the world does that mean? Well, you're going to try to compare this number to a special number called the critical value. And the critical value uh, that you're going to compare it to really depends on how many total numbers you have here, and you have to refer to this big a crazy looking table. So for now, I imagine there's going to be some questions related to this, but for now just bear with me. The calculator has told me that the t-value for this set of data, this set of two, this set of data from two samples is 2.066 and I'm going to tell you that my critical value is 2.048. How I find that <clears throat> is by referring to a table of critical values and what I have highlighted here is probably the most common row uh, column that you'll actually be using. Uh, briefly, 0 0.05 refers to the 95% confidence level. 1 minus 0 0.05 is 0.95. So in this case, we're looking at this particular column. So why is it this one and not this? Well, I'll explain briefly now, but we'll visit this later. Two tails, well, right, right now we want to do a two tail test. What, what that means is when I'm comparing these two samples, I just want to see if there's any difference overall. I'm not thinking that one sample is necessarily bigger than the other, or sample one is bigger than two, or sample two is bigger than one. I just want to see if there's any reason for me to think that there's any difference at all. So if it's just a general difference at all, could be larger, could be smaller, we use a two tailed test here. And then so if I scroll across, this is 50%. I'm doing one minus, right? This is 80%, 90%, this is 95 And in general, scientists use the 95% confidence level. In other words, if the results are significant 
at the 95% confidence level, it's usually good enough to publish or make a big deal out of or move into the second phase of trials um, for us to think that something is worth uh, investigating. So now I know that it's one of these numbers highlighted in yellow. Well, which one? Well, I already told you it's 2.04a, but you wouldn't know that. So we have to actually refer down to this column over here called the degrees of freedom. And this is pretty basic. You just take the total number of values you have, which in my case here is 15 plus 15, just 30. And then you subtract 2. Subtract 2. So if I do 30 minus 2, then I get 28 degrees of freedom. If I scroll down here to 28, go across, 28, highlight across, that number is 2.048. So my critical value, 2.048. Now all I have to do is compare these. And in this case, it's very close. The number is very close. What you're looking for is if the T value is larger or smaller than the critical value. Make a note of this. If the T value is greater than the critical value, then you have reason to believe that there's enough evidence for you to say that the results are statistically significant. It means that because the t-value is larger than the critical value, that the raw data is showing that there is a significant difference between the means here. So it's not just that this number is larger, but when you actually compare all the data, the spread, how much they overlap, that the difference, there's enough difference, it can't just all be due to chance. And this is actually, since we're using this 95% confidence level, then we can write a long sentence that looks something like this. Uh, the T value of 2.066 is greater than the critical value of 2.048. This means that the results are statistically significant at the 95% confidence level. I got that because I chose my critical value based on the 95% uh, confidence level. And that there is a significant difference between the sizes of the leaves of sample 1 and sample 2. And finally, we therefore conclude that there is enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. You must state this at the beginning of your experiment, what the null hypothesis is, but it's always the same for these types of statistical tests, these t-tests. Um, in the beginning, you're assuming that there is no difference between the means of the samples. So I assume that Eugene's scores are no different than Jimmy, whatever the other guy's name, Jimmy's scores, or that the size of left hands are no larger or no or smaller than the size of right hands, that the leaves on those trees are the same as same size as the leaves on these trees over here. The alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference between the means of the samples. In this case, because our t-value was greater, we can reject the null hypothesis and go with the alternative hypothesis. Now, this doesn't tell us the reason for why these leaves are larger than this or the reason why these leaves are different size. It just tells us that the, the raw numbers that we put in have told us that there is reason for us to believe that there is some kind of reason that will extend, is explaining um, the, why these leaves are larger than those leaves and maybe we can go investigate further. But this is just a mathematical, statistical calculation to help us do this. Okay? Um, finally, really quickly, how do you handle this on a calculator? I'm not going to plug in all these numbers. That would take forever. I've got a few numbers in here ready. Uh, so you turn on your calculator. You're at this default state. Press the Stat button, and you get this menu. If you click on Edit, then you can go ahead and enter your raw data numbers in here. If you have data in there, you can go and erase them or just type over them and take note that this is list one and list two. The t-test does not work with three different lists. If you do have three different lists, you can compare list one with list three, list two with list one, list two with list three, um, so on and so forth. But you plug in all your, your numbers here and then go ahead and press stat again. It comes back here. Everything's saved in your table. We're gonna go over and do tests and go down to two sample t-test. Press enter and leave everything at its default state, default list one, list two. If you accidentally delete these numbers um, and you're on your table, just make sure this is referring back to the correct lists. This is what I talked about earlier with the two-tail test. Or if you think that the mean one may be smaller than mean two, then you can go ahead and choose that. Make sure to press enter to select it though. But we're gonna keep it back here at this. Leave everything else at default, scroll all the way down, and you'll highlight calculate. If you press enter, 
Um, it does all the math and spits out numbers for you. There is our magic number. Now this doesn't match up with the example that I'm using up here because the numbers are actually different, so don't worry. But in this case, whatever the data I put in, it's giving me a value of 6.99, which I round up to 7.00. Notice that it's negative. You can ignore that. Um, what it's actually referring to is, if it's negative, it means the average for the numbers in group two is larger. But for all intents and purposes, you can just take the absolute value. So you would write down t is equal to 7.00. It tells you x1, the average, or the mean of group 1 is 10.62. The average of group 2 is 19.64. So that further helps me to understand why this is negative. But you don't need to include that, again, in your when you're recording your statistics. What else does it give us? It tells me the standard deviation of group 1. So look at this. The, the numbers in group 2, the numbers in group 2, if I go back and look at what's in my table, the numbers in group 2, there's a greater spread of numbers here. There's a smaller spread of numbers back here. Let me come back to my numbers, calculate, and everything is good. And the standard deviation of those. And then N1 and N2, this is great. It just tells you how many numbers there are. In this case, it was really easy. You could see visually there were five. But if you're collecting large samples of uh, insects or whatever, and if you have you know, 125 and 125, then at least that will help to make sure that you are counting everything correctly. So you take your t-value and you go and find the critical value based on the data. In this case, I had 10 value points. And so 10 minus 2 would be 8. So I'd be going across. This would be my critical value, 2.306. So I would be comparing 7.00 to 2.306. And I would conclude that because 7, my t value, is greater than the critical value, that the results are statistically significant. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. OK, I went through that pretty quickly. Hopefully, uh, it helped you a little bit. Go back and rewatch some of the parts, post a, a question or comment if you uh, need some help with any of that. All right, let's hope the audio got recorded this time.